I'm in the day room and I see Dennis talking to Megatron. I'm like, oh, he must be trying to buy some drugs from him. But I do not think Dennis would be as successful as me finding drugs. I gave uh, Megatron just some of the dust of it, just for helping me out. You wanna see it? All right, cool. Hold on. Uh, it's a little dope sack. So that's the, that's, called, that's ice. So basically like crystal meth. Wait, man, let's go get some. Let's get some. So Dennis may have got a little bit of drugs. That's cool, that, I, I ain't tripping on that. However, he's not gonna get nowhere near as much as what I get, especially from Megatron. That's why I'm called the Pied Boss. So if his drugs in here, I'm going to get all the drugs. This is how it's gonna be. Hey, get Megatron! Me and Justin, we about to one of us about to get out probably the next week or so. We really were trying to get up with you know what I mean? Me, Justin, Diane, you get some. He talking about both. Nah, just the just the Yeah, I'm gonna get it. Yeah, that's gonna be fun for smoke. Uh, yeah. You know, Dennis, he honestly can't do what I can do. Since I've been running the store, I probably made about three to 400 bucks easy. We'll be able to get a bomb of these. So now I, I have the money to buy all the drugs, and I'm not going to stop with the clone. I was able to get clone. So now I'm waiting for Megatron to get ice. Megatron said he didn't have no ice, but he did say he had some cream. So I was like, all right, cool. Bring everything you got, I'll buy it from you. And what is cream? I think cream is, uh, I think they call cream like uh, crack, coke, something like that. And we were sitting at the table, he was like, hey, bro, look, I got this for you. You know, he showed me the cream and I turn around and the seal like right here in my face. So I'm like, oh, snap, like, put it up, put it up, put it up. Reels. Who's reels? Pack it up. Pack it up. I'm excited to go home. However, it's still a lot of work that needs to be done in here. So it's like a bittersweet moment. You did it. Did it. Guess what else I did? What? I got the drugs. You got them on you? Yeah. Can we see them? Yeah. <sighs> Who'd you get that from? Uh, Megatron. Um, I knew I would be leaving. Didn't know when exactly. So I just kept them there until I was called. Well, this here is the Coke. I gave $40 for this on the guy's books. This here is the clone. Um, yes. So what are you going to do with it now? Um, give it to you. <laughs> hey, Kaika. <laughs> no, I don't. Hey, Kaika, he's hanging with the woods. You're not a wood. It's like a box of crayons. <laughs> you only belong to one color. He has that confused. Brian, who 
questions me. How much coffee you have? No, you're not supposed to even be talking to me. I'm not part of your gang or your race. You're not supposed to be politicking with another race. You know, the coffee doesn't matter. It's about the rules in jail. Now you got two other races involved in it. You have to put your guard up because at any given moment, I could get into a fight, go to the hole and spend the rest of my time in the hole. Kaika, what, what the f Now I have to take care of that. Ikaika being racially confused, jumping the fence back and forth is very dangerous. It's gonna give you a label of, you don't have no loyalty to anyone. So you need to pick a race and stick with that race, quick. You got 10 gang bangers in the room. They're ready to rip your head off. And he knew what he did was wrong. If you're gonna play politics, let's play it all the way. Ikaika, he needed a rude awakening. Being racially confused, that could get you killed. I think I've overstepped the boundaries of what I've previously seen on 60 Days In. I'm in so deep. At this point, I'm past being in too deep. It is what it is. D-Pod, you could tell that there were a lot of uh, thugs, you know, gangsters. And um, when you walk into, you know, C-Pod, it's not like that. It, there are so many other people and they're all always right up on you. So it's way more of a community, but way more overbearing. I'm just asking, if um, any one of y'all be interested in some of y'all bitches to the brain for a honey yeah. bun or a dang Something that I did notice was a lot of people trade trays with commissary items. Next 
worth it. Yeah. Can I get another? Yeah. Give me that. Give me that. I give you another one. You got to be like that. I like this place. Uh, the people here are cool, down to earth, very personable, easy to talk to. Things that took me two weeks in Depot, I did in a matter of like two, three hours now. Like I said before, you can't just watch these things. You have to become involved. I became involved in the politics. I became involved in the economy. I became involved in the stock market there. This is a calculated move on my part. I'm an inmate. I can do this stuff, and I can get other people's respect. Whatever I was doing was working. We specifically told all the undercover participants not to trade commissary when they were inside. So my advice would be, don't take what you don't have. You owe somebody money in there, it's serious. It frustrates me that we moved him out of D-Pod because he was getting too close to inmates, and then he moves into C-Pod, and he's trading commissary. It makes me really wonder where Ryan's at right now. Since I've been here in C-Pod, I function more like someone who is in jail and networked a little better, and it just took way faster. Try to find another train. Another train? What, breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> Say if I got a bunch of food, you ain't got nothing, you want to come borrow something from me, and I'll put a surtax on it at the store. If I gave you like a noodle on Friday, I'm probably going to want two back. If someone can't pay what they owe, then they've got to face the music. It's really what you, you see in the movies and stuff, like the rapes and the stabbing. That stuff really happens. We ban stores in our jail because when inmates can't pay their debt, it never ends well. I realized that running a store gained you some sort of uh, respect and it can give me an insight that I, I won't get anywhere else. I started talking to Alex, and I started just kind of asking questions. And I learned all of his faults and flaws. If I were to run a store, I could move up the ranks, play the system a little bit, uh, make a lot of money, gain a lot of influence, use my intelligence to, you know, work up the ladder of a few things. And I could literally start making some huge moves in jail. Breaking the rules sometimes, it's, it pays, it's worth it, and it's really not that big a deal. My roommate Tiffany came in and she said, Angel needs you to pee for her. And I was like, what? I was like, I, uh, what? Like, I just started stuttering. What can she have in her system? Drugs. Angel is scary. I don't want to piss her off. Can't be. You know I've been doing. Uh, I'm trying to think of what stays in my system. I'm like, that's what we. It ain't in there now. You've been in here a couple weeks. Before. I was like, thank you, but no, thank you. I'm not gonna do this. Damn. Next thing I know, Angel's at the door staring at me. I've always been a leader, not a follower. If you cross me, we got a problem. What about Pete? Oh, hell no. Nah. Mm -hmm. That's supposed to be in I ain't got a pee. I try to drink something. I've been waiting.
Ain't no glove over the top. Thank you. Good luck. You might release you early. So I did pee for Angel. I never thought that I would be peeing for anyone in jail. I mean, I was told that between me and the pregnant girls, we were probably some of the cleanest people in there. So <laughs> I wasn't thinking like I normally do because I just I don't feel well, like physically, and I don't want to have an altercation with Angel. I just don't want no problems. After I did it, I had all kind of things going through my mind. What if she doesn't pass? Is she going to try to fight me? If I had going to have to try to fight her back? But I felt like I, I just do it in whatever happens, happens. A guilty by association. This is serious. I definitely could get in trouble. I'll bring his passage. You go home, man. So I did pee for Angel, and now she's getting released. <laughs> but I don't think one has anything to do with the other. Shanice comes over to me and says, I gave Angel some of my urine. What, what do I say to that? I had to just walk away. I am not on board with that. Shanice doesn't know I'm a cop. I don't like that behavior. Obviously, she doesn't care about these women, and she's not really seeing the big picture. So I'm extremely furious. Shanice needs to go home. I want you gone. just don't feel good. Um, I feel sad. I'm physically having a hard time, like, eating and sleeping and just being, just being, functioning. I just wish I could sleep one whole night, like, just sleep through the night. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, got real set of wheels up there. Oh, yeah. Very real. Very real. Very real. Sayarquil. They're like mood stabilizers, but they're like their main effect is like it puts you to sleep. Tiny, she gets these prescription pills. She gets them for free from like for herself or other people. So basically like a drug dealer, I guess. Your items are Is it three? I got like a little store going on. If somebody get like Seroquel or Rim Run, those are pills that I might can get two, three items for. It's all a part of the hustle. And then you give her two and I'll give her one. Okay, perfect. Some of If Michelle gets caught by a CO buying pills from another inmate, she could be looking at some real charges. I understand she wants to maintain her cover, but Michelle is getting into dangerous territory when she involves herself in the drug trade. Me and Cindy, she got us both last night. Yes. yes. I mean, I you owe her three. We owe her three. We owe her three. Why is it only the white people she does it to them? Why? Race, race, race. She's from a race. Race, race. Why? 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 white girls are being taken advantage of to just make Tiny more mad. And I think that's all what it's about, is getting a reaction. Because when they get that reaction, then they can do something. They can maybe hit her. Oh, you come to a you'll be like, one item, bro. Just give me one item, bro. I you gonna charge her eight items? No. 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 I bet she don't get nothing for sending um, Michelle. Michelle. Girl, coercion, coercion. Death by coercion. Oh, no, who she did that to? Who are all this money? Who are all this 
wrong to and then I then I told them they owe me. Did I do that to you? for Tiny to come collect for her fake medicine that she hands out. And she didn't do anything. Can I have some ibuprofen? Thank you. I'm ready to go. Just not somewhere just the normal person wants to be. It works so much quicker with snorting it. I don't know why, but it just hits you a lot harder. And when it drains, it like makes your throat numb. Yeah. Yeah. How does it make you feel? Online? Not gonna be like no 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 every single time because then they might be like everybody else doing it why aren't you doing it? Oh, I just don't feel good today. Yeah, I bet you don't. Right? It's sick for usually the rest of the day. It burns. I ain't ready to go see that This is not who I am. I'm not really this person. It's good though, it'll make you feel good. Don't you feel good already? Look at Marie with her mouth. See, oh. that's the biggest thing is your mouth. And it's okay because it makes them look at me like you're really, really, you're an inmate. There you go. I thought you said you were gonna give me none. <laughs> Ouch. But you'll be feeling so nice. Oh, you'll be up there like this. They got, you know what they said? They got like $5 bucks, $10 bucks of ice. But, yeah. I kind of fell into this conversation with Nate and Rabbit. I know it's five dollars, uh, five dollars a bump, but if I know it's not worth it. He was high for like two days. The conversation with Nate and Rabbit about meth and and getting it into the dorm. That's when I really started thinking about the possibility of me buying some. So how are you going to get you met somebody at court that had it? I've got to think about if it's worth my safety or maybe blowing my cover just to show. Chief Adger, how easy it is to smuggle in drugs. Yeah, let me you in a minute about something. You like this? I'm pretty sure that I can convince O'Neill to sell me meth without any suspicions. Hey, so how can I uh, keep this between like you and me? Like, I don't want nobody else knowing. Like, how can, uh, you think you can get me, like, you can help me out, hook me up on the, get me, like, a bump or something? I think they're out. They're already out? Thanks. All of them? Uh, you just waiting to get some more? Yeah, how long does that take to get back in here? Probably a couple days. Are you waiting on it, too, or what? What? What about six? How many was it about six, seven items? It's like two lines like that for ten dollars. Mm -hmm. That's what he does, ten dollars. You know, he tried to sell them less than ten dollars. But it's a nice two lines, you know what I'm saying? For ten dollars. This could be dangerous, but I've gotta see how they get meth inside of a dorm. That would definitely be an eye-opener for when this experience ends, and I can present that to Chief Adger.
and place a bag of meth in front of them and be like, I was able to secure this bag in my dorm. Simple as this. Uh, how long did you usually take to, to get in here? I'm really not sure, but hopefully you'll have a whole weekend to Once I found out meth was in 500, I was like, hey, this is a great opportunity for me to, to be able to investigate how they get it in here. It's getting towards the end, so now this is my number one goal and my number one priority. <laughs> so it's been a couple days since, you know, I bought the commissary items for the meth. I was just checking in with O'Neill, you know, to see what the status was. If people in the facility were to find out I was getting meth inside of a dorm, I would get locked down for it. But when I saw the opportunity, I took it, man, because that was a good way to open some eyes. Because my whole goal in this is to present this to the colonel when I get out. We had a little delay in, I guess, the uh, transport inside. But I know that my time's limited, so I'm just hoping that I can get the meth before I leave. The 60 days is up, and it's time to pull the last three out. I'm going to pull Dennis out first, because I'm really not worried about Tony. Johnson. Are you Johnson? Yeah. You are? Yeah. Back it up. Back it up. Back it up. All right. Like. Quick. All right. I was so ready to go. It was like, had chains on and it just all fell off. And I was just ready to get up out of there. Yeah, yeah, you told you. Felt really good. What's up, guys? You made it. Hell yeah, I made it. Hell yeah. How does it feel? Amazing. I'm just happy to be out that place. It's a jungle in there, man. You gotta, you gotta look over your shoulder every second, every minute. You know? Did you bring out something with you? Hell yeah, I brought it with me. Can we see? Yeah. Yep. So, brought it with me. Bought my shank. How easy was it to get that out of the jail? It was too easy. Too easy. Went right through the metal detector, didn't even sound off nothing. This is gonna be something I'm gonna give to the sheriff and the chief, let them know, you know, how easy it is to take and bring stuff out of the jail, how easy it is and how endangered their employees are. I'm hoping that it shocks the shit out of them, like, you know, because the guy like me, they probably just was like, oh, it's this guy or whatnot, just probably come in jail. Sit. But no, I got in the mix and I put my life on the line for this. So I can't wait to, I don't even want to like hand it. I want to toss it over to him. Like, yeah, that's how terrible your jail is. I had not stretched out my legs to run in two months. So right now I'm just wanting to get out and like just run and just uh, take it all in. You guys have no idea what it feels like to be locked down for 60 days in the jail and be a free man and really take in nature, really take in the little things in life. 
Man, it's a blessing to be out. 